Welcome back, kiddos, to my channel. My name is Emily Gear. I'm a multidimensional channel and a transformative energy healer. We're going to be doing your reading today uh, for this week, roughly the next seven days, um, but it's also going to include information about the eclipse coming up this week on June 5th. I totally just low-key uh, paused the video because I needed to make sure it really was a lunar eclipse, which is about what I was about to say. But anyway, you'd think I'd look these things up beforehand, but I don't. So we're going to talk about that today as well. And as usual, just um, a quick uh, broadcast of my website, which is imemilygear.com. And that is where you can find um, various channelings or readings uh, via email, and also the link to schedule a private one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom reading or energy healing session or both um, on this website. So definitely check that out. I am taking clients for a while. I was not, and I anticipate that there will be a time soon when I will be taking another break in order to do some work on my business. But um, for now, I am still taking clients. So I'm just shuffling the cards. I've already opened the records as usual. I'm just asking Source for the highest vibrational messages we can receive for the collective for the week ahead. What can we expect in the week ahead? And I'm feeling that this is automatically going to be about... Um, some of the energy shifts and changes uh, that are accompanying this um, lunar eclipse. I believe it's a new moon lunar eclipse. You know, I totally paused the video and didn't bother to look up that part. Doesn't actually matter. They'll give me the they'll give me the information we're supposed to hear right now. All right, so. All right, we have the Hermit in Reverse. We're using the light, light Seer's Tarot, which everybody on the planet is using right now, but I had to jump on the bandwagon because it's so freaking gorgeous, so I got it for myself. <sighs> Energies for the week ahead, please. I'm actually feeling some testiness. Um, oh, five of swords in reverse. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see what else wants to come out here. You know what? I pulled those in this in the normal way, but what I've actually been doing recently is shuffling until it felt good to stop and then pulling out the top card. So we're going to do that for the rest of them, I think. Ten of Swords, Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups has been coming out for a while. Eight of Wands, Three of Wands, Ace of Pentacles in reverse. I'm feeling like stopping there for this moment. The Chariot at the bottom. Okay, so definitely what's coming up is, is meant to move you forward. Um... I am feeling like it puts you in touch with your power um, that you've been spending all of this time kind of digging up and, and pulling out and excavating. And you've been excavating it from inside yourself because it was there all along. You just maybe had not been tapping into it. Maybe you were so far out of alignment with it that some of what has become your power and you've really become uh, focused on and in touch with um, – wasn't even known to you really maybe you dreamt about it maybe you had wishes about it maybe you liked movies about certain things that you are now discovering are actually part of yourself and all of those things were building up to this culmination where you discover whatever this you know I want to call it like a superpower is because I do feel like with this this card the chariot at the bottom of the deck that oh yeah right underneath it a magician and the emperor so massive, massive power that you're coming into contact with at this time um, of your own. And um, 
So I feel like you've been in the process of pulling that out. And uh, the, the hermit, it, the hermit's in reverse, but we also have the five of swords in reverse. And what I'm feeling from those cards is something like having overcome the kind of um, fear and having overcome um, the doubts of what you are really meant to be doing or really meant to be kind of activating within yourself at this time, okay? Um, that whatever disbelief was surrounding the circumstances, okay? So what I feel for most of you is that this really is surrounding what your power is. And it's hard to believe that we would be in denial of our power. And yet we are because it follows the storyline that we've been taught our whole lives. Um, because our lives are a story of becoming empowered if we are becoming more and more aligned with who we truly are throughout our lifetimes, right? So, so you are here by no accident in this position and really discovering something about yourself. I'm going to say for some of you, it's like this deep well of emotional, um, of emotional depth that you didn't know that you had. You may be reaching emotions you didn't realize you had and possibly moving emotions out of your physical body in a way that you never had before. You know, you might be saying, holy shit, I've lived my whole life with this pain, this fear, this sadness, and now it's gone. Um, others of you are, and I, I might be in this camp because I've been so focused on the physical body. Others of you may be um, discovering sort of the power within your own physical body to heal itself or to, you know, uh, perform some kind of physical feat, whatever that is, um, endurance or, or something. Okay, some of you are having that experience. Others of you are connecting with source energy in, in a brand new way, and you're kind of discovering how that's been with you your entire life, how that has guided you and been there and you didn't even know it. So um, so there are all these different aspects that, that we are experiencing depending on what, what we're working on right now. Um, I'm see, like, for instance, they're pointing to my Chiron and Taurus. That's what I've been working on. Uh, in my eighth house. So it could be, some, you know, I don't even know what it is for you guys. Again, not an astrologer, but they like to show me these things. So um, for, for you, it could be something totally different. But there is like a set of, and that, that's what karma kind of is, is um, moving through these cycles so that you can um, up level. And sorry, I thought my, I thought my thing was going to fall on me for a second. Um, so that you are becoming, again, more of who you are. You are breaking out of the cycles that are stories and getting into getting into alignment with your highest truth, okay? Um, lots of that going on. A whole lot of overcoming of fears. Things that we've told ourselves or learned that kept us held back. We thought we were keeping ourselves safe. But what we were is keeping ourselves from experiencing the depth that is available to us. Whether this is in the emotional realm, the spiritual realm, the physical realm, whatever. Um, Ten of Swords is the next card here. So um, I want to say this is like the huge death of those cycles. And this, with the Seven of Cups, it's almost um, overcoming that kind of confused fear that we may have been in for our entire lives. I almost want to say everyone is remade around this time. I don't know if this is related to this particular lunar eclipse. It might be the series of eclipses that comes up remakes us in some way. That's what I'm really feeling that you will come out remade. I'm really focused on this snake coming out of the seven of cups here. Here's the 10, the 10 of swords also. I don't know if I've been showing you these cards. You've probably seen them on other channels because they're so gorgeous. Um, and these have come out with the eight of wands all about, to me, a rush of spiritual energy of like upgrades, of um, movement forward, of achievement, accomplishment. Um, it's just metaphysical power. Again, just reminding you that the bottom of the deck here is the chariot with the magician and the emperor. Like, this is like a trifecta of power to me, okay? Um, 
and each person's power is their own. And it is this, this sort of uh, journey of discovering that we've been on our whole lives, but there is another cycle here and the cycle of the year 2020 it's not even just 2020. They're actually showing me all the way to 2023. Okay, so for whatever that means, whatever is going on in that period of time, 2020 to 2023, and they're showing me, it, it, it might be a horoscope thing because they're showing me it in a wheel, but they're actually, it's kind of like a spiral. Um, but in any case, that is what this cycle is about. And so I find it interesting that we're entering this really intense period of personal power so early in that cycle. Um, so what does that mean? You know, is this the thing that propels us forward that allows us to really do, I'm going to say do good. I, I hesitate to give things the labels good and bad, but do good in this world, do our mission in this world, do what is in alignment for us. Um, achieve or experience the soul growth that we have come here to experience and achieve in this bizarre fucking bizarre ass environment and this is what is forcing this is that bizarre fucking environment is a huge part of enforcing or um, of forcing this um, this change this growth the next two cards we get, I'm just gonna, I don't, I don't know what's gonna come out here, but I'm just gonna show you three of wands with the ace of pentacles in reverse. Okay, so I'm definitely getting that like, not to, so they're pretty much saying, don't worry, don't worry that you don't see the outcome. Don't worry that you don't see where this is going yet. It's not important. What is important is that you are kind of in this power here that you are poised and ready and you know who you are you're standing on two feet on solid ground and you're ready to go and that's kind of where I feel like we are now this is just saying you you know you might not know the seeds you're planting yet you don't have to all right um I think that's part of what is so has been creating a lot of fear has been so confusing about this time period is there is um what are they showing me like when you are approaching a waterfall and you like but you're on the you're on the top right like let, let's pretend you're gonna go over niagara falls but you're on you're in the top it's like you just sort of see it's like an infinity pool you don't really see what's over the edge <laughs> and i don't want to insinuate this is going to be like going over a waterfall although there are rainbows in the waterfall but um, but it, it's just that you cannot see what is around the corner and that's intentional. And that's because there's so much about this time which is really about faith and trust. I don't know why that is, but this is what they're saying. This is, um, it's almost like they're showing me like weightlifting. I've been doing so much like physical work and they're just showing me like how I am building my muscles um, to be, stronger than they've ever been before and this is kind of what that is and this faith and this trust is a building of the muscles and i feel like that actually adds to and contributes to our power i'm going to leave these bottom of the deck cards in and see if they come out anywhere else um but this faith and trust they're telling me that we've seen I'm, I'm saying we, and it might not apply to you, but in many cases in our societies, we've seen faith and trust more recently as a weakness, as something where it shows us as sheep or as blind followers. And um, while there was a time for that attitude because we needed to be broken out of that kind of behavior, there is a trust in the true source that um is that strengthens us okay that's what they're showing me now this is a strengthening and a bringing you into your power the chariot okay so bringing you forward um powerfully determined um forcefully in your balance with the black and the white horses there's something about whatever we've been through where we've had to balance out things 
that have been out of balance for a very long time. And that's going to be individual to each one of you. Again, for me, it very much relates back to the physical body, the physical, um, the energy of the physical body, Queen of Pentacles. Probably for a lot of you, this is about a, a physical nature or a connection with nature, a connection with our physicality, a grounding into the earth. We talked about grounding, I'm pretty sure, last week. So I think... What I'm feeling here is those of us who may be more heavily um, in general, more heavily occupying the upper chakras as opposed to the lower chakras are being brought into, not brought into, we're, we have been um, brought the circumstances, the lessons or the the situations in which we had to make choices to ground ourselves for our highest and best good okay and that was bringing us into alignment because we became fully embodied within all of our chakras okay um so i think that for probably most of you listening to this this is the case um this is a really you know the not to brag, but the energies I'm pulling through are really high vibrational. They require the grounding, but at the same time, in order to be in contact with them, in order to be in resonance with them, sometimes you've got to be way up there. And so I'm betting all of you are kind of way up there all the time, or at least a lot of the time. And so this grounding has been important, an important aspect of your growth, of your um, pushing forward. I'm, a, I'm just like seeing like a fucking fireball. Um, Like chariots of fire. I mean, it is the chariot, but you know what I mean. Like there's a reason why this card came out. Your grounding into the earth is so important for your energy right now and um, your own personal power. So make sure you're doing that daily. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, the star. Here's the star. Um, uh, all this stuff on the floor, I'm going to throw back into the pile. So, I I'm feeling the star card as like, it's like the ascension process. I don't know why, again, I'm so resistant to all those like, words that people like to use like the ascension process it's very a lot of people don't relate to that but I just want to say that it's got to do with both connecting to the earth and to the heavens that it is fully embodying your energy field that was granted to you with this physical body Um, and you are fully inhabiting that now, or you are in the process of fully inhabiting that. This is important because the energy field grows as you do this. And this was part of the plan to have so many individuals on the planet growing and occupying larger and larger energy fields, larger and larger spaces, which would then offer to other beings on this planet and even off this planet but offering to other beings that balancing energy there's a balancing energy which is coming from you if you do not fancy yourself a healer then in some ways you you already are because you're doing that with your energy field that it's it's an influence that you are not, it's not manipulative because you're not forcing it on anyone, you're offering it. And if people are going to be in resonance with it, they are going to benefit. But it's not a taking kind of thing. What I feel like is people come in contact and become in resonance if they are in the space where they are ready to tip, where they are ready to change or or grow or whatever and we're all doing that to each other at all times um, some of you may be highly resonant again like highly resonant with the earth energy some of you may be highly resonant with um, source energy and you help each other to balance if that makes some sense this um, 
I feel that this could have to do with the whole sacred union path for many of you, but in other cases, this is really just about everyone around you, that um, there's just been such a strong message that the fewer labels we use, the better. So all of us are capable of experiencing this kind of soul expansion, and that's what's happening here. On some level, they just said on some level. So that does tell me that in some ways, the twin experience may be different than others, but that is not to say that others do not experience the soul expansion or have the opportunity to experience it, okay? Interesting, okay, I'm not gonna say that right now. The hanged man. I'm going to shuffle until I feel good and I'll pull out a few more cards just to go with this hanged man. Here's the hanged man. I'm getting a feeling of like earth angels, kind of. Ugh. Oh, we'll take it. It's the king of swords. Bottom here is Ace of Cups. So the overall energy is coming into the, I'm hearing actually the energy of oneness. So um, this is about creating oneness out of division, is what they're saying. And so we have the Hanged Man with the King of Swords. Then we have the Three of Cups with the Ace of Swords, both in reverse. Nine of Pentacles in reverse with Death and the Two of Swords. So what I'm feeling here is... Um, what I think is happening to people, and I think what's, so the hanged man is what feels like this kind of earth angel energy. And I feel that's referring to you guys, to each of you. And, and that this is talking about the way that you may be influencing those that are closest to you, whether it be a twin flame, or whether it be other individuals, a soulmate, or friends or family um, in your, general situation but that it helps them it actually I want to say that it puts them deeper into their mental space where they are no longer able to keep themselves trapped there now normally I would say that the mental space will trap you there but I almost feel like this presents to them almost an argument they can't refuse. And I believe it's because you are living from the heart in such a way that um, you cannot help but be an example to others. And when you can live from that space of acceptance, you can't help but, but have joy and happiness in your life. And so they can see that and process it from, that's what it is. They're, they need to process it on their level where they are right now. And so many of them are occupying that mental space, really. They're really heavily into the mental body. So they can reason out, shit, 
I'm not happy where I am right now. I'm not getting the joy that I thought I would get from X, Y, or Z, you know, whether it's like a job or most, for most people, it's going to be like, um, employment or money or a big house or, you know, um, a certain trophy type relationship. I mean, not everybody's in that kind of relationship, but you are, if you are, it kind of goes in line with like the big house or the job with a big paycheck or the fancy car or whatever. Or even, they're actually telling me, don't just focus on the physical. Some people have like sold themselves to a spiritual pursuit and because they do not truly love themselves because they are not truly in acceptance of themselves as part of all that is that they are not finding what they wanted to find there okay um so take that as you will Maybe you'll relate to that in some way or know people who are going through that. But in any case, what you are doing is setting an example living from the heart. And they are able to see how that changes you. They are able to see your transformation. This takes the blindfold off of their eyes. And it lets them see where they thought they were so stable and yet there's so much more. This is an awakening of sorts is what it feels like. So you may be providing, you may be helping to provide an awakening. Um, the eclipses, the series of eclipses may also be providing awakenings to people who maybe haven't experienced it yet or maybe haven't, you know, experienced it fully yet. But I do have the sense that you are acting as a catalyst in some way for a number of people. Let's get these cards now. I'm just gonna pull out a few more and then we're, we'll wrap this up because we're getting toward the end here. These are weird to shuffle. What I've got here are two ways of moving. We've got the boat and the airplane. We've got somebody digging a hole. And we've got a toaster. I actually feel like... I want to say that the heat is being turned up. Um... And that sort of this chariot type movement forward is becoming more critical in that there is still more to discover because we are infinite beings, right? It just doesn't stop. There is constantly more to discover and that the heat may be turning up. So what I feel like is that there's this sense not to be afraid because this is what is really propelling you forward this is what is taking you far the funny thing about this transportation stuff is that it implies that there's a destination and i do not get the feeling that there is a clear destination here and that we are not supposed to know that we are supposed to be in faith and trust right now and faith and trust in what well importantly ourselves okay our own ability to embody whatever power it is we recently excavated from ourselves okay but also source the universe divine whatever you want to call it 
that there is a greater power than each individual one of us and that is the collective of us that is the unity consciousness and that is where your faith must go even when things externally are toasting okay even when the heat's being turned up outside of ourselves Yeah, this is a child climbing. You're climbing, you're ascending, climbing, reaching new levels, reaching new heights. And the kid's got a little star on him, which brings me back to the star card, which really was about the same thing. Ascending, climbing, reaching those higher levels of consciousness. One step by another step by another step. And so, and they just said, and so it is. And so it is, guys. That's what I've got for you this week. Um, I hope that was helpful. And uh, I, this is probably going to be the only reading I do this week. I'm probably not doing Vimeo readings now or maybe ever again, uh, at least not for now. Um, so just keep an eye out on YouTube for now. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm honestly like, just like everybody else, I don't know what the end game is. I'm just here uh, learning what I'm obviously supposed to be learning right now and going with the flow. And that's what hopefully we are all doing. And um, so I will plan on seeing you next week. Okay. Thanks, guys. Oh, and as always, thank you for liking and subscribing and sharing and especially commenting on this video uh, means so much to me and keeps me going. So I'll see you next week. Bye.